Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And this is a video of a type I don't get to do very often. I'd like to introduce to you the Quinn LED Dig Quad, a bigger brother to the Quinn LED Dig Uno. Being built from the same bones as the Dig Uno, the Dig Quad is basically more of the same in a few aspects. Now, before you start to worry, no. The Quinn LED Dig Uno isn't going anywhere. The Quinn LED Dig Quad is going to sit beside it as another choice, each suited for their own type of projects. So let's take a closer look at this new board. First, let's rewind real quick. What does a Quinn LED Dig Uno do again? Well, it's a board that is easy to build by yourself and allows you to control digitally addressable LEDs, like, well, you see all around me, such as, well, 5 volt WS2812B or SK6812 or 12 volt variants such as WS2811 or WS2815. It has nice screw terminals for your wires has reverse polarity protection, and make sure that all the power is running through a fuse so that if at some point anywhere down the chain a short circuit or anything else happens, you are protected. Next to that, it makes sure to run all data signals through a level shifter, making longer cables to your LEDs, or running a large amount of LEDs, no issue. And further, it includes some large capacitors to smooth out power and has an optional temperature sensor and some GPIO pins available for sensors, buttons, a screen or a relay. So basically in short, the Quinn LED Dig Uno is a step up from your breadboard or DuPont cable setup to something more permanent and safer to run. On QuinnLED.info, there are lots and lots of information articles available about LEDs and LED strip. But there's also guides for the Quinn LED Dig Uno the, and now the Quinn LED Dig Quad, such as a complete hardware guide, a soldering guide, a pinout guide, wiring guides, and well, everything you need to build these boards yourself. And besides building the board yourself, since a short little while, I've also started a project making the Quinn LED Dig Uno available as a pre-assembled board. If you don't want to, don't have the time or can't do the soldering part yourself, you can order a module fully assembled, and since it comes with the ESP8266 included, it's just a case of unpacking, screwing the wires in, and you are ready to use it immediately. Okay, enough about that board. What's the difference between a Quinn LED Dig Uno and a Dig Quad? Well, as I mentioned, you should see it as a bigger brother to the Dig Uno. It's not only physically bigger, it's also bigger in capabilities. There are two main expanded features. The first one is not having one digital output, but actually having four. That means you can drive four individual LED strips at the same time with this single board. And yeah, 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 that looks great. I'll get into why that's important later in the video. I do advise to invest in an ESP32 for this. The board is still compatible with an ESP8266 module like on the Dig Uno, but for advanced functionality, an ESP32 will be required on the Dig Quad. Now, as I showed behind me, that's working perfectly, but there is a slight caveat with that. As everyone who watches this channel more often knows, I love the WLED firmware when it comes to running addressable LEDs. Sadly, WLED currently does not yet support running multiple output signals. It is on the roadmap and is being worked on, but it's currently not yet available. I decided to go ahead to create the hardware anyway, and I had a need for it in some projects. And as you can see, well, that is working fine with custom software, but WLED will come later. Now, back to why you would want multiple LED output channels. Let's get into that after a message of today's video sponsor. If you were looking to get some Quinn LED Dig Uno or Dig Quad PCBs, they are the perfect place to get it, PCB way. If you've ever looked into doing one of my DIY projects, well, you're going to need PCBs. And PCB way can make those for you very quickly and deliver them right to your doorstep. I often use them because they offer consistent quality while still being cheap 
And they also have very versatile shipping options where you can combine multiple orders if you want to, or use e-packet shipping, saving on shipping time, but also costs. Another unique feature is that once you place your order, you get a representative assigned to your order. And if you have any questions during the process, they can help you out. Yeah, is this PCB way? Yeah. I just ordered some of those Queen LED boards. Is everything correct? Will this will this work? Yeah, yeah. PCB way here. Don't worry about it. We've made hundreds of those boards and they all work great. Ah, okay. Great. I hope to get my order soon. Thanks. But honestly, for actually for real, if you need any PCBs for one of my projects, such as the Queen LED boards, or for your own project, go check them out. I'll have a link down in the description. And if you register with that link, you will get a few dollars off your first order and it will also let them know I sent you. Currently, they're celebrating their sixth year anniversary and they have special coupon codes to get even more discount. Cool. Okay, back to the video. Okay, so the reason you want multiple output channels is the WS2812B protocol that is used to address all the LEDs. This has a limit in speed and or amount of LEDs. Basically, if you'd want to run 1000 LEDs, you are down to about 30 updates per second per LED or frames per second. I generally advise people to stay around 500 LEDs in total because then you get a nice and smooth 60 frames per second. With multi-output, however, those limits are per channel. That means that instead of being able to drive 500 LEDs as a maximum per board with the separate four channels, you'd be able to drive 2000 in total while still remaining the smooth 60 frames per second. So for larger installations, this has a big benefit over having to use multiple separate controllers. The second main feature upgrade of this board is power delivery. Although the Queen LED Dig Uno was rated for 15 amps or even higher, the Queen LED Dig Quad expands that in all regards and can be driven up to 30 amps continuous or even higher in bursts. Now, that is cool on itself, but the main reason is to make power injection to your LED strips easier and safer. To do this, the Quinn LED Dig Quad has seven positive and seven negative output terminals on the board. That means you don't have to tinker around with external splitter blocks and such stuff anymore. You can just connect all the wires directly to the board. Next to that, it also has five separate fuses for those power terminals. Now, I realize those numbers don't match. Basically, power terminals one and two run over fuse one, and three and few, few, three and four run over fuse two, and the rest of the terminals have their own dedicated fuse. Depending on your LED setup, you can either use the five individual terminal and fuses or use the combined terminals for some of it. it. It really depends on the setup you're going for. This way, when you, for instance, require 15 amps of total capacity and you have three power injection wires, especially with five volts, you need those, you can wire those over three times a five amp or maybe 7.5 amp fuse instead of one big 15 amp fuse, making the whole installation a lot safer than before. And well, as mentioned, having lots of terminal available saves on external hardware, such as those DuPont, uh, uh, Wago connection clamps and stuff like that. And it's just a lot less fiddling around being able to connect it all directly into the board. So I believe even just those two things are a big step up from the Quinn LED Dig Uno. The Dig Uno is great at running small to medium projects, but especially when multi-output becomes available, the Dig Quad is a much better fit for medium to large projects. But more small features have been added, such as a polyfuse to separately protect the onboard electronics, or a 5 volt EXT connector. The 5 volt EXT connector enables you to feed the board power with a different power supply than what is feeding your LEDs. Of course, the board is compatible with 5 volt and 12 volt LEDs again, but this way you could use a 5 volt cheap phone charger to keep the board online while a relay is automatically turned on or off with the LEDs and can switch a larger, less efficient 5 volt or 12 volt power supply for the LEDs separately. This saves a lot in idle power usage and the five volt EXT connector and jumper position makes this very easy to set up. Oh, 
And as you've probably seen during this video, I've tested the board with uh, both screw terminals and also those pluggable style, the, the green connectors, uh, Phoenix style pluggable connectors. And while those are awesome to work with, they, they're easier terminals to screw stuff into and it, being able to disconnect the blocks is great. They are not capable of handling the same amount of power as the screw terminals can. I will have a dedicated article about using those plugs in the future because I do think they have their place but you just need to be aware of the different power limits. Next to that, all features of the DIG Uno carry over, such as the onboard temperature sensor, multiple exposed GPIO pins, including I2C to hook up a screen, for instance, or pins for a relay, a button, extra temperature sensors, it's all still on there. And well, what's more to say? If you know the Quinn LED DIG Uno, you know what this new board is built on. Same DNA and design, just more of it. And especially if you build one yourself, you will be able to build this one yourself too. Most components are actually the same, and it's not more difficult to build than the DIG Uno. There were some small changes, such as being able to move away from that expensive DC-DC converter to cheaper modules because there's now space on the board. But a lot of other things, such as the screw terminals, diodes, most of the resistors and capacitors, they are all the same with mineral different components, so you can order just a few things and you can build one of the dig quads too. If you were a member of my Discord server, you will probably have seen more of this board already, including lots of testing and power throughput thermals, etc. If you haven't done so yet, make sure to join the Discord server where we discuss lots of things like my boards and LED projects and stuff like that. I'll have the link down in the video description. And well, with that said, the Quinn LED DIG Quad is available now. The PCB ordering links, hardware guide, pinout guide, and soldering guide in, in pictures are done and online right now. The soldering guide will come soon, and by popular demand, I'll be using a hot air station for soldering the SMD components. This board is still perfectly solderable with just an iron, but, you know, it's, it's good to mix it up. <laughs> and while truly as the last part, since the demand for the pre-assembled Quinn LED DIG Unos has been so high, they are currently still in stock if you want to get one, I'm already in the process of having a batch of the Quinn LED DIG Quad made. Hopefully those will be available in a month or so. I'm really excited about that, but I'm not sure when they will be here yet. So yeah. It's going to be a bit more expensive because of the bigger board components and included ESP32, but I'm trying to get a good price for you guys. Well, that's it. Thank you again for watching. Lots more content is coming up and give this video a like if you think the new board looks nice and I hope to see everyone back in a future video. Bye-bye.